G'day, Tom Cosm here again. Um, the topic of today's video is moving from the studio to playing live performance. Uh, this was the topic of my workshops um, in Europe lately, um, but I thought I would come home and I thought I would do a good, uh, nice in the studio type version of the video, uh, you know, so I can get some good screen captures, you can hear good audio, there are a few videos floating around on the internet that people took of the actual workshops, but I thought I'd sit down and make a make a proper one just for those of you who, who want to really get in depth with it. Um, so the topic of the video is, is it's it's for people who already have a song, um, they've already written something, it doesn't matter if it's Cubase, Logic, whatever, you just need to know how to rewire into Ableton. It's so you have your song laid out in Arrangement View, but you want to get that into the Session View in Ableton so you can actually perform it live. Now, it's quite a iffy subject at the moment, I mean a lot of people are quite lazy when they play their live act, they, um, they would render the file down or just chuck it in and then chuck in the next tune or whatever and not really do a hell of a lot. And and I've been watching this for quite a long time now, and it was quite baffling for me. Um, again, coming from New Zealand under a rock, you know, I, I, I first time I actually went out overseas and saw all these live acts, I was quite disappointed in the in the in the, in the, in the lack of effort. And after a few years, I, I've kind of come to realise that it's actually quite a difficult thing to do. I mean, okay, you're a producer, you've gotten to a point where you can go out and you can play in front of a whole bunch of people, people respect and like your music. The last thing you want to do is actually sit down and spend hours, days, months learning a new technique to actually perform that music. So the method that I have and that I use is uh, very easy and it's very safe. It's, it's so you can get from the studio to live very, 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 very quickly and very safe. So everything that you've already done, the tune, exactly how you've written it, you can play that live but you now have the ability to change it real time if you choose to do so and the the idea is to jump in the deep end and start experimenting a little bit and once you realize how fun it actually is um, I guarantee you it'll take off and you will be having this full force live act which is completely improvised uh, in no time so I do hope you enjoy it again um, my name's Tom Gosm this is what I do for free everything I do is for free so please take this enjoy it and uh, yeah any questions please email me cheers Okay, so this is basically what a tune for me would look like. I write everything in Ableton uh, in Arrangement View. I don't use anything else. Um, you might use uh, Cubase Logic, whatever. This this technique is roughly the same. Um, but this is this is this is kind of what an overall finished tune for me would look like. You see down the side we've got rough. Oh, we've got 32 layers. Um, each one of these layers or tracks has an instrument or a sample in it. it might be a VST instrument. It might be a MIDI track. It might be uh, it might have a waveform in it. I have uh, resampled quite a lot of this stuff down as waveforms just to save CPU power because I don't particularly have a good computer. But anyway, this 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 is this is this is what my track would look like. And let's just play it here just so we can have a listen. So everything's ready to go. I've sat down in my studio. I've gone right. This is my tune. Now I want to get this into session view so I can perform it live. And this is um, this is the part which uh, I find a lot of a lot of producers are uh, you know they, they they get a bit lazy because you know you've already spent so much time trying to work out how you want this tune. You don't want to have to kind of muck around and spend hours and hours and hours and hours getting this into a way that you can actually perform it live properly. And what people tend to do is you know render it down, render it down as a mix wave file open it up, chuck it into a, another arrangement view with another bunch of mixed down files and uh, just just hit, hit play and, and, and you know maybe tweak a few things or do something. What I'm going to show you here is how you can actually get this into session view and have a, a huge amount of things that you can do to ch to, to actually play it live but still keep it very very safe. It's still going to be able to play exactly how you wrote it. So the basic concept here is I've got I've got all these tracks, I've got 32 tracks, but this is too much for me to work with. I couldn't work with 32 tracks when I'm playing live. I don't have enough hands, it, it's quite a complicated thing to do. So I'm going to group these down. I'm going to group everything down into six layers. Um, again, this is this is dependent on you. You might find you not like four, you might find you like eight, you might find you like ten or two, it doesn't matter. I personally like six because when I play I use six layers. I, also, I, I use two lots of six layers, I, I apologize, I use one lot of six and then for the next tune I'll use another lot of six. So at any given time I might be using, I don't know, between 10, 11, 12 layers, but 
mainly the main purpose is six layers so the way I'm going to do that is right down here at the bottom we see we have 32 and if I go into uh, session view by hitting the tab key here we can see we've got all these layers and tracks across like this again here's the 32 up here I'm going to go down and I'm going to create I'm going to create six new blank audio tracks and by do, I'm going to do this by pushing control T or you could go insert audio track up here but I'm going to push control T six times one two three four five six and we'll just let it think a little bit and we have six brand new layers here now these are going to be the layers that I'm going to I'm going to feed all of these 32 tracks into now I'm going to name these the, the name of the, the type of groupings that I call them. So the first one I'm going to call it bass. So this is all everything to do with bass lines in this tune is going to go into this bass layer. This next one I'm going to call it kick. Now I usually only have one kick layer in my entire tune, but I like to have complete control over my kick when I'm playing live. I like to do lots of fun things with the kick drum. There's a lot of things you can do which I'll show you later. The next one I call perk. So that's all my percussion hi hats, snare drums, bongos, loops, any any anything which which is percussive goes into that percussion layer. The next one I'm going to call sin. Sin is uh, all my synths, my melodies, arpeggiated, arpeggiated lines, uh, my pads, all that kind of stuff. The next one I call tech. Now this is one which is slightly specific to me. I like to have lots of glitchy things in my music, lots of squelchy bits. So everything which is kind of chopped up and, 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 and glitchy goes into this tech layer here. And the last one I call rest, and rest is just where everything else goes. It might be vocals, it might be some sound effects, it's just where anything goes that doesn't fit into any one of these five here. So now I have these six completely blank audio tracks sitting there absolutely empty with absolutely nothing to do. And so what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to take all of these 32 tracks and assign them to one of those six layers. So if we go back into session view here, we can see them up here. Here are our six layers. So all of these 32 layers, they all go down straight through and they come through the master. And the master squishes everything together and that's where they get compressed together. But now I want to send them through one of these six before they go to the master. They're kind of like a gateway, or you could call it a sub-channeling if you're used to that term. It's, it's basically going through and assigning each one to one of those channels. And I do this by going through and using this section here. Now this section here is uh, the kind of the input-output part of Ableton. And this is where we can tell it where to go. For instance, this channel here, bass comp. Um, you'll notice that I uh, I haven't really named my tracks very well. I'm very very sloppy at it. Um, this method it's, it it really does help if you do actually name your tracks um, as you create them because uh, then you don't have to go through and try and figure out what each one is. I'm really bad at it, so please do as I say here, not do as I do. But this one here, let's have a listen. So here's the sample here. We're going to solo it and we're going to have a listen to see what it sounds like. Okay, so it's kind of a wobbling bass build-up sound. So it's, I would I would call that a bass. So right here, this drop-down menu here. At the moment, it's going to the master, as I said before. Everything's going out through the master. Now I want this to go out through that bass audio channel that I created. So I click on the master. We get this drop-down menu, and if I scroll down, we can see these six new layers that I created, and I'm going to go bass. Right, that's been sent to bass. Let's have a let's have a look at another one just so we can see. Okay, this one was pretty obvious. This is a kick. So if we just solo that and play it and have a listen, that's definitely a kick. So again, let's open this master drop down box here, and we're going to go kick. So now that is being fed through that kick layer, and we'll just do a couple more just so we can see. These ones look like percussive type things. So let's click on these. We'll solo this. Yeah, we got some hi hats going on, so we'll go uh, percussion, and the one above that, what's that? It's a snare, so I would say that's another percussion loop. So yeah, the idea is to go down from one down to however many tracks you have. You might have eight tracks, you might have hundreds of tracks. So the, usually I, I I I'm around the thirty mark with my tracks, and you go through and you assign each one of those tracks to one of these six subgroups and I'm just going to open up another set which I've done it for just so we don't have to, to waste time and go through and do all of them at once 
again I really do stress it so it's a lot easier if you name your tracks as you go because then you don't have to go through and solo them and figure out what the sound actually is and send them to a track you can just go okay well that's a hi-hat so that goes to the hi-hat example blah 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 also um you know I, you can look at the waveform and see I mean you know if you look at look at look at this here this is obviously a MIDI track with lots of little hits on it so it's obviously going to be a percussion loop so we're just going to wait for this set to load it's my lovely fast computer okay so as we as you can see now I've gone through and I've given all of these tracks all of these layers all of these instruments if you like a group this one goes to rest it's it's, it's, it's it's this one goes to bass and and you know we've got percussion rest this is a synth line you know some 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 stage this becomes you know some synthy thing so every single one of these 32 layers has now been assigned one of these six so if I was to play this tune now let's have a listen you can see the levels on all of these six new audio tracks lighting up they're all being fed audio now so nothing is going out through the master everything is going via these gates which I've set up and if we go back into session view you can get a better idea of how it look you can see they're all going for it here so you might be wondering why 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 would you do that well now what we can do is in we can we can render the tune but instead of going file and render to disk we can render this tune now in six different layers and all these layers are going to be completely separate all the bass is going to be separate the kick's going to be separate the percussion's going to be separate and we simply do this by clicking at the start of the set making sure all the tracks are armed see I've armed, I've armed them already here so they're all, all set on record I've got record ready here we'll zoom in and we're going to hit play and you can see it's now resampling the entire tune in six separate layers for us. You can see the waveform here, the kicks going along, we've got this little percussion loop thing happening here, everything's going along. The combination of the uh, screen capture software for my computer and recording six audio tracks is, is making the waveforms actually a little bit delayed, but they are actually being recorded so don't don't worry about that. So we'll just let this go just for a little bit, just so you can see how, what, what's happening. We scroll up, we can see this. This is this uh, bass line is starting to come in here. So if we go down in theory, we should be, be starting to get a womp 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 happening over here. When the waveform catches up. <laughs> and there we go, so the tunes drop into the main part. So I'm just going to hit stop there. I uh, usually what I do is I let that play out throughout the whole tune, but we don't need to do that because I've already 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 done one that we can open up in a minute. So let's open up the one which I've already resampled. Nope. So yeah, I, I, again, in theory, what what you're doing here is you're rendering your tune, but now it's separated into six layers. So say if you were to drop those six layers into a into a into another arrangement view, um, which we'll do in a minute, you, you you already have so much more control over everything. I mean, if it's just one rendered flattened tune, it's like you've taken all the ingredients of the of the tune and you've cooked it all up. So there's not really much you can do specifically to an individual thing. I mean. You might be able to EQ, you know, the highs out a wee bit, or you might be able to add a delay to it, or you might be able to cut some bass, or that kind of thing. But there's not much you can do this way. You could, you can completely, you know, completely take the hi hats out completely and not affect the rest of the tune whatsoever. Okay, so looking here, this is, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is the whole tune recorded. Um, this is something I've done earlier, so you can see now everything has been done so I could actually delete all of these all of these I don't actually I'm not actually gonna delete them but we've got six wave long wave files which are the whole entire tune so let me solo these for you I'm soloing just these six and we'll pick somewhere in the tune and we'll hit play so we're just listening to those six recorded files now, there's, there's nothing else going on. So that's great. So the next step would be to take these six files, 
boom, 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 boom. I'm going to cut them, control X, and I'm going to create a new live set. No. We'll just wait for this to load. Okay, so here's a brand new Ableton live set. We don't need this MIDI channel. We're going to delete it. We're going to go back into arrangement view and we're going to create six or six audio tracks just just like before so so we can click up the top and we can paste so now we've got again the entire tune that we had before but in a brand new live set rendered down as six wave files we'll just stretch it down so you can have a look so again let's play this oops have to turn this on and the BPM's a bit wrong, so I think it was 127, no, I think it was 130 actually. So. so that's great. So, I mean, instant, yeah, again, instantly we can now do things. We could, you know, completely take out the bass, take out the kick, we could take out the percussion, you know. Every, everything is, is nice, and, and nice and easy. So that's, that's the first step of, 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 of getting a set into a live ready thing as you can see it was pretty quick i mean you know if you do this a few times you can you can i i can do this in about five minutes you know and this is really handy if you're just before a gig and you've just written a new tune you really want to get it so you can perform it live um it's it, it's really 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 fast but the next step i want to show you is 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 the way that you can really have lots of control over over how your actual music works how your set plays and what i'm going to do here this is a very fast way of cutting it up into loops so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this point here at 17 and I'm going to drag it down. So I've selected 16 bars, 17 through to 33. I've selected them all and I'm going to push Control E, which is going to cut. It's going to slice. So I've made a 16 bar slice there and you'll see before there it's also created a 16 bar slice here at the intro. And I'm just going to go through the entire song and I'm going to do that. Control E, Control E, Control E and just cut, cut all these up. I'll explain why in a minute. Boom. And we can see this last little part here. This is actually all silent, so we don't need that. So I'm just going to select these clips and hit delete. So now we have six layers, all cut up into 16 bar loops, right? So I'm going to pick the first loop, hold down the shift key, pick the last loop, which is going to select everything. I'm going to control X, which is going to cut this entire, th all these things. X, and I'm going to push tab, go into session view, just hide the ins and outs. And we just make sure this first square is selected up here, and we're going to go Control V, boom. So now instantly, our entire set in six layers is now vertical. You can it's, you can see in, in in arrangement view, it kind of flips it around into a horizontal view. So if I play this first scene, a scene meaning um, a, an entire row of uh, you know a, a row of clips here. If I play this, it's going to play us our first sixteen. And if we play scene two. Is the next 16. 3. That's where it drops. We'll go down a bit. And down here. And we can kind of pick and mix, you know. You go, well, I want this bass line. And I want this synth. And I want this ticky bit. And I want this. And this percussion. And then you can go back to a scene. But. The cool thing about Ableton, it has this really interesting function and quite a lot of people I've talked to don't actually know that this exists and I think it's a really, really handy thing. Uh, it's, it's called Follow Actions and basically it's a set of instructions which you assign to one of these these little loops or these little clips and you, you, you give it the instruction of what to do when it's finished playing. So I'm going to use this here by selecting all the clips. Where are we here? I'm going to select all the clips, so I've clicked at the top left one, again hold down the shift key, shift key and click on the bottom right one, so all the clips are selected, I'm going to open up this little uh, panel here, and here we have this little follow action section, and I'm simply going to tell it to go every 16 bars, what, what do you want to do after every 16 bars, drop down menu, play next. So now, as I'm sure you can understand, we click play at the start, and you see how this next row or this next scene of clips, they've started flashing, they're, 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 they're prepared, they know that they're going to play soon because these, these six clips have, 
had 16 bar play next follow actions on them. So these, these are ready, they're, they're prepared. So if we just wait for 16 bars to go ahead, you can see it counting up here. Boom! The next scene's going to play automatically, and now the next row is going to is going to be armed and ready to play. So in theory, if I was to drop dead, my entire tune, just how I wrote it in the studio, is going to play all the way through. It's going to play from the start to the finish. The whole tune is going to play, and you know you might be saying, well, you know, how's that live? It's still exactly the same. You might as well just render it down. Well, to me, you now have six layers and everything is cut up into 16 bar loops so you have so much more room to move I mean it, it, it's a bit daunting you know moving from the studio to actually playing live for the first time and I think this is a really really good way to jump into the deep end so you can start experimenting very 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 subtly you can you can get a feel for it you know you, you're not having to just learn this you know really complicated technique of performing using a laptop you can you can you can just get your tunes all loaded up and ready and you can just you know still sit there and play and muck around but you can do things like okay well I just want to play this percussion loop instead let's see what this is like and we'll play this here that's no good that one or maybe this one But if you don't really like it, then you'll go back and you just click, click the scene again. We're back back to where we started, so the tune will play through again. Of course, the next step here would to be go through and name your scenes. This is obviously an intro, so I would call that intro. This one would be... Well, I'd call that just another intro too. You know, and, and you can go through, you could say... This is the drop. Let's call it the drop. Oops. And we've got this little. So that's uh, we'll call that breaks, and then uh, you, know, you can just call this you know, whatever. You know, you go, you, you go through. It. You can also do this with the clips. You know, I mean, if we stop all the clips and we have a listen, you can hear boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that's just a four-four kick. And we could give that a color. Let's say we want four-four kicks to be yellow. And I think these are all pretty much four-four kicks, apart from this one. It breaks. So we'd give that maybe another colour yellow and we'd call that one, you know, break kick. Oops, spelling, we have been good at spelling. Both my father and my sister are English teachers and I think it's kind of made me a worse speller <laughs> and English speaker. So if we put the break kick in and put a percussion, just like that. And where, where was that drop? Here's that drop. So this would be the first drop so we go first base and we could call it we could give the bases a blue color you know and then what do we got you know so this is kind of a minimal base or we'll like minimal base and we'll give that a blah 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 you know kind of works like that and also for instance this clip here you can see down here it's actually silence what I would do is I would just make that black so that's so I just know that that's silent so I wouldn't actually try and trigger that clip so that's the basic gist of it. Um, a again, it's a really, really quick and easy way to get your tune exactly how you wrote it in the studio into Session View so you can to play it all the way through just how it's supposed to play in the studio but now you have the option to change it in a huge magnitude of ways you can do so much now you could add a, a delay you know you could add a delay or like, let's add a grain delay to the percussion you know let's, and you know let's maybe And, it's, and, and that's just affecting the percussion. It's not affecting anything else in the tune. So I do hope you, uh, you utilize this. This, this, is, this is exactly how I do it. Um, I, I, the one thing that I do change is I don't cut things up into 16 bar loops. I'd actually go through and uh, let's just put this back in here. I'd actually go through and I'd cut them up into... It's not black, it's changed another colour. I'd go through and I'd say, well, okay, well, that's a, that's a base build. And then I'd say, well, this is, you know, this is the main... Where are we? Rename. I'll just open the clip here. I'll just go, this is the main base. And then I'd turn that into a loop and I'd kind of loop it along like this. It does take a wee bit longer, but, 
I like to I like to do it this way. So yeah, that's uh, that's how I get my tunes from the studio into a live ready session view. So there you go. That's my technique from moving from the studio to live performance. I hope you gained something from it. Um, it was about a three four hour workshop compressed down to about twenty minutes. But I'm sure if you're at the stage where you're already writing tunes and you already know what you're doing, you uh, at least gathered uh, some insight in how to do it. And I really really can't stress enough. Once you get to that point where you've got your tune already, but you can very quickly and easily start experimenting and improvising, you'll have a great time and you'll be improvising a whole new live set in no time it's 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 a lot of good fun and uh yeah i hope you got something from it again finally uh i consider myself a busker this is what i do i do this for a living so uh we're an inter cyber web busker whatever so um i understand that most of you are probably new producers and new musicians and you don't have uh a lot of money yourself so that's absolutely fine please just take this this is my gift to you please just enjoy it and use whatever you can from it if you do make something cool please email me because i really enjoy that um but if you are financially stable enough to uh, actually pay for music or pay for education or pay for hobbies then help me out it would be appreciated thank you <laughs>